Good morning, folks. It's 6 a.m. on April the 10th. Today is a special day for me, I guess. Today marks 18 months in this particular camp. And there's a whole story behind how I ended up here and what happened before I got here. And I'm going to try and give you today a, uh, I'm going to try and give you a potted history of how I ended up here. Now, for those of you that have been here a while, I've covered this before. Cramcast 001, my first live stream, covered, covered this. But it took two and a half hours to do it. And today I'd like to try and, um, try and kind of recap that, I guess, and, and give some of the history in a more condensed version that that entire two and a half hour video has only had a uh, a few views really there's a lot more of you out there now supporting me helping me following me um cheering me on i hope i hope most of you are with me there's a few out there against me hey respected likes i see you <laughs> that's okay i've banned nobody you can you can be negative about me. You can cast dispersions. You can you can doubt the veracity of my story. I don't ban anybody, so far at least. Okay, folks. Like I said, six in the morning. It's going to be a day. I'm going to be thoughtful and um, ponderous. I guess. I'm going to be thinking things over. I'll be honest with you. There's much about my situation that is um, my own fault. Certainly the result of my own decisions. Didn't know what the outcome of those decisions would be at the time. Uh, but there's a lot caught up in circumstance. Covid, banks. I'm going to try and give you the pot of history. Of how I ended up homeless, but as, in particular today, I want to focus on this camp here. When I ended up here, what happened when I ended up here? So I'm going to try and cover that for you today, and I'm going to try and keep it short-ish. And by short, I mean under an hour for the entire video, probably. He says that at six in the morning, not knowing how much he's going to waffle on. Might need some editing afterwards. I, let me tell you this, when I do the tramp casts, I'm nervous beforehand, I don't know what I'm going to talk about, I've got my notes of what happened in the week, and I look at it and I think there's not more than half an hour to talk about here, and then two, two and a half, three hours later, I'm still waffling on and I'm trying to bring it to a close quickly, um, it appears I like the sound of my own voice. So I do kind of manage, I surprise myself in how much I can waffle on. I'm going to try not to do that so much today, because otherwise this video will end up too long. Um, I want to cover my history. I want to cover the, the history of this camp. The 18 months, today is 18 months in this camp. I want to cover that. I want to cover the development of the camp. It's been quite a development. From just me and a bedroll and a couple of bags of belongings. And by bedroll I'm talking a uh, a mattress from a sunbed, from a uh, you know, recliner next to the pool. Thin little mattress and a, and a yoga mat, a rubber, a rubber mat on the ground. Two picnic blankets and... Uh, two towels that was my bed initially my pillow was my bag the main bag my hold all with, with my my main bag of possessions when I was in the park and, and and things have grown over time to the point where I'm here now in a big tent seven meters by three meters almost two meters high like a big fuck off tent I've now got electricity in, in, in the tent, in a way. I picked up a TV a couple of weeks ago. 
if you saw that video. I picked up a fan, an electric fan. The recent purchase of the EcoFlow River 2 so that I can power the TV and the fan. Still not use the TV in for real. I, I've turned it on and tested it worked, but I haven't used it. The fan similarly plugged it in and tested it worked, but I haven't reached a point where I needed to turn it on. Yesterday came close. Yesterday was very hot inside the tent, uh, but low down wasn't too bad, so I didn't I didn't turn the fan on. Helen, my friend there, she uh, she called me King of the Tramps the other day. I'm sat here in my palatial tent with a rug, with a with an armchair, with a coffee table, with a TV and a fan, with electricity in a field. King of the Tramps. It's only a couple of weeks ago I had the Guardia Sizzle trying to move me on. Sizzle, not civil. I know, disrespectful. Respect has to be earned. It's not automatic. But, um, I think today's going to be a day and I want to try and cover certain aspects of it. And I'm standing at this time while it's still dark and uh, I don't really have the lighting to cover the, the, the situation. Um, it's not the best camera in the world in the dark. And the lighting I do have is a little bit stark. Stark, not dark. But um, I'm going to try and cover the day. I'm going to try and give you a, a look at my life. Some people have jokingly suggested recently that uh, that this is the life. This is, you know, give it all up. Go live in a field. Have everybody else provide for you. I see that point. I see how it looks that way or could look that way if you, if you had that opinion, if you had that viewpoint. I remind you, if, if you, if you have any doubts, go back and watch Trampcast. Zero, zero, 001. I'll put the link in the description. I cover the entire thing. There's only a couple of hundred people ever watched the, the, the damn thing. Because at the time I made it, I only had like 20 or 30 subscribers. You know? Now there's almost 800 of you, a little bit less. But we're headed for 800. Soon, I think we'll hit 1,000, probably within a month or two. Um... Guys, the, the story, let me give you the potted history. Guy moves to Spain. World looks all uncertain. This is 2016. There are, um, Spain's in the middle of three general elections where they can't really decide, they can't really get a majority in any direction. The UK is about to do the Brexit vote and America has just spent a year building towards their, um, well, the election that Donald Trump ended up winning. So you've got Spain in electoral turmoil, you've got Britain in European turmoil, and you've got America in the midst of um, major political turmoil. And I had to decide whether to register for for uh, residencia here, whether to whether to become tax resident, get my NIE, and um, follow the bureaucracy and the rules here make a decision are you here for good or not and i hesitated because of the uncertainty a few years later covid happens my bank cards are just expiring from two different banks i've got two different bank accounts my current account that i'm using daily and a, and a rainy day fund and a, a an amount of a few thousand pounds set aside for emergencies you know if ever you need well rainy day fund says it all yeah if you speak English. Um, but my cards expire and the banks aren't cooperative and you can't get through to anybody and um, I can't get replacement cards. 
then the place I'm living, I'm sharing with a friend and he wants me to move out because he's got his girlfriend moving in. New girlfriend moving in. So I have to move on. I get an apartment of my own, and, but I've only got cash. In the room to the cars expiring, I knew they were expiring, so I took out as much as I could in cash at the time. I move into the new apartment and I pay the deposit and I pay the first couple of months rent. But my money starts to get low. Now my ex, back in the UK, we were still friends at the time, she's trying to help me. She's going into the bank and saying, look, you know, my ex abroad, he's um, got an account with you, he's got thousands in the bank. You didn't send replacement cards, what's what? And, and they refused to kind of um, acknowledge her because her name's not on the account. She's acting, she's trying to ask them on my behalf as a, a friend, I guess. In, in their eyes, her name's not on the account, so they can't act on her instructions. I'm here, and they don't acknowledge that I'm me, kind of thing. And, and we eventually find a way with one of the banks, and, and, and she gets some cards for me. And um, my current account, my main bank account, starts to run out of money. I'm, I'm using that money up over, over the following few months, or the following year. Leaving me with just my rainy day fund. And it's not inconsiderable, you know, it's not a nothingness. It, it's it's enough money to live on for a year or, or maybe 18 months if you live carefully. That's in the bank. But I've never taken any money out of it. I put the money in there as a rainy day fund. I, I wasn't touching it. My bank, in the meantime, have closed the account. They've declared it um, abandoned or in their terms, dormant, as if this was the money of a person who's died or, or you know, there's been no interaction, so this might be a dead person. That They just, they take the money, apparently they don't pay interest on it at any point while it's dormant, so it's in their interest to, to go around declaring as many accounts as possible dormant. And when I contact them and say, hey, this is me, let me have my money, send us a card, you know, here I am. They tell me, um, Spain? We we had no knowledge of Spain. Wrong. When I opened the account, I said, I am going to Spain. I'm putting money in here. This will be my rainy day fund. I gave them signatures. I gave them my address. I gave them my email address. They deny all of this. They said their records show no email address, no nothing, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Because they didn't act at that time, my email address, which was a commercial email address, a corporate, I, I had my own domain name that was my, my full name. First name, last name, dot co dot uk. Uh, initials, that, what I gave them was it, first initial, second initial, at full name, last name, dot co dot uk. That was on record with them. I know it was, because there's no way you could have opened a, a bank account in the, in the year I opened this account without giving an email address. You couldn't, they asked for it and it, it's a required field on, on the on the forms. But here I am, li there I was living in my apartment 20 months ago. No, 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 that's not right. It's two years ago, it's over two years ago now. Living in my apartment, contacting my bank saying, look, if I can't get any money, I'm going to be evicted tomorrow. And, uh, I was put through to the complaints department for some reason, but that I, I was assured was who handled these emergency kind of, you know, give me access to my money, I, I, I need access, I need access now. And it, it was escalated, I'm told, up through three layers of management, and at the end of the day I was given a phone call back and told, no, sorry, that would be too much of a risk for the bank. We can't confirm that you're you. And I asked, what's the procedure? What do I do? Now, do, do I, I walk into a police station, show them my passport and ask them to call you? I can walk in and, and do a phone call. I can do a phone call here now and I can, like, like live, you know, I can do a, a screenshot. I can show you my passport. I can, I can tell you that I'm me. I can show you documents. I've got the initial letters that the cards came attached to. When you get the card and the pin in separate letters, I got those pieces of paper. I had them at the time. They've now, I've still got them, but they've been through floods now. And they could be rejected because they look like they've been played with or amended. 
But my bank, my bank said no. That there are only two ways we can confirm your you. You walk into your UK branch and show your passport, or we send a letter to your UK address and you respond. I'm in Spain. I got a bit of a legal thing that means I can't leave the country easily. Can't leave the country. I tried, got arrested at the airport. Um, it's just. We're not going to cover that now. I've covered it in the past. It's something and nothing. Um, if you watched a video from a few days ago where I talk about the Guardia Civil, the Guardia Civil is a Spanish police force, but the pun on them being bacon and me roasting them. I know, I know. But, um,. My bank gave me t only two ways to validate my ID and neither would work for me in my circumstance. I asked them about alternatives. Could I go to a lawyer here? Could I go to, could I go to a police station here and have them verify my ID and just confirm that I'm me? My bank said no. Hey Santander, I am coming for you one day. This story is not going to end well for you. Um, UK financial journalists, I've contacted a couple of you. So far, nobody's gone anywhere with this story. I'd like you to reconsider that, guys. Because for 18 fucking months, I've been living in a field. In four days' time, it'll be 20 months since I was made homeless. Since I ran out of friends that I could stay with. Santander, I'm not happy with you. I'm going to shine a light on you, eventually. For now, I'm just a tramp in a field, and you can probably safely ignore me. Maybe. But eventually, you will pay for this. I'm going to sue you. What's the value of me living in a field with rats and mice amongst my stuff? Abandoned by my bank, while you sit on thousands of pounds of my money. Thousands of pounds, while I live like a fucking tramp in a field. Sorry, guys. It still makes me angry. Abandoned by my bank. Stole my money. I no longer get interest on my money, even when I finally get access to it. If I finally get access to it. These buggers are robbing me. They've robbed me now of 18 months, well, 20 months of my life. Sunday will be 20 months. 18 months in this particular field. And that's... Hmm. Let me calm down a minute. Today's video... Is about 18 months. I'm not going to say celebrating. Commemorating. Marking 18 months living in this field. With the ups and the downs. Flooded on the first night in this field. Flooded again one month later to the night. 10th of October. I arrived in this field. And we had a thunderstorm. And I was flooded by water ankle deep. While I was lying on the floor. And all of my possessions ruined. One month later, I thought I'd find a slightly higher ground. And I'm sleeping under trees. I formed a tent. It rained for five, six, seven hours. Torrential, solid torrential rain. And I'm at the bottom of two hills. A hill that way and a hill that way. And for, for, for four, five, six hours, the kind of the storm defences, the storm drains held and, and took all the water away. But eventually they, they were overcome. The, the defences were, were defeated. And a wave of water came down the two hills. And I was hit by a wave of water almost a metre high. And I was left in water kind of thigh high in the field. And anything that had not been destroyed in the first flood was hit in the second. That's my story in this field. That's the beginning of me in this field. Now, a month after that, the local authority did some work at the top of the field digging a kind of a extending a storm drain, a, a deep channel to divert water away. And it hasn't, we haven't had any repercussions since. We've had no follow-up, no follow-on. 
We had some torrential rain last winter. We've had almost nothing this. I mean, we had a few little bits. You watch the back of my videos and there have been a couple of storms. But there hasn't been anything that was four, five, six hours of torrential rain. And there's been nothing close to a flood in the field since. In fact, the grass is almost dying in the field. Spain is in two or three years into a drought, apparently. But, um, I don't know, guys. I don't know. This has been a waffling opening. This is meant to be an opening statement for a day's worth of, um, I don't know if it's going to be a day in the life of or just a reflection and contemplation on. I don't know how well this is going to come across because of the lighting and it only been six in the morning. I don't know, guys. I don't know. All right. That's it for now, I think. I'm, uh, I went off on one a bit more than I intended there. I wasn't going to go there. But I wanted to give you a little bit of the history of how I ended up here. How I ended up homeless. And how I ended up here. Banks. <laughs>